Another piece of the puzzle, as an unseen piece of video of Kaylee Gonsalves and Maddie Mogan in the hours before they were murdered comes to light. What could it mean for the case? Newly released surveillance video shows Kaylee Gonsalves and Maddie Mogan in the hours before they were murdered, and they're with a man who's been heavily scrutinized online. I'm Ann Jeanette Levy, and welcome to Law & Crime's Sidebar Podcast. This piece of surveillance video is from the early morning hours of November 13th, and it shows Kaylee and Maddie walking down the street with a man who's come to be known as Hoodie Guy, and he has been heavily scrutinized online, despite the police saying uh, that this guy is not part of the murder investigation. They don't believe he is involved. This piece of video was released by a Facebook group, first to Fox News Digital and later to News Nation. We have requested the video from the Facebook group, and so far they have not released it to us. So let's take a look at this video clip that also has audio of Kaylee and Maddie talking. What did you say to Adam? I, I told Adam this is what Kaylee Gonsalves' father, Steve, had to say to Fox News about the audio and the video clip. Um, that film, to the family, we've had that film for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe the business reached out to us directly and um, after they had given it to the police. So it, it was kind of comfort to, to us because it's, it's just two girls having a good time talking about, uh, you know, asking about their bartender and, and just just being just being girls on their way to uh, the grub truck. Steve Gonsalves told Fox News that Adam is the bartender that the girls were talking to that night and he is not part of the murder investigation. He's not a suspect. And joining me to discuss this new piece of video and the other developments in the Idaho case is Jennifer Koffendoffer. She is a retired FBI agent. Jennifer, welcome to Sidebar. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. Jennifer, uh, this new piece of video, and I want us to just look at it very briefly, the clip, uh, it shows Kaylee Gonsalves and Maddie Mogan after they left the Corner Club bar walking down the sidewalk, and they are with hoodie guy who has been, uh, you know, scrutinized heavily online, despite the police saying uh, they do not believe he is involved in this crime. Uh, so let's take a look at this and then we'll talk about it on the other side. What did you say to Adam? I, I told Adam okay, so Jennifer, we hear uh, Kaylee and Maddie talking about Adam. Uh, Kaylee asks Maddie, uh, what did you tell Adam? And Maddie says something to the effect of, I told him everything. And then the video uh, moves on. So Steve Gonsalves said this Adam is their bartender. They've known about this video. He's not related to the investigation. Uh, so what are your thoughts on, on this clip? It's so brief. Well, first of all, I think it answers a lot of questions that some people might have about Hoodie Guy. You know, from the onset, very early on, law enforcement has said they don't expect that he is involved in this murder and in this crime. Yet he's been indicted on social media with little more than the way he looked or uh, the, his positioning at the food truck. Really... Uh, was uh, not clear to me why uh, social media sleuths jumped on him with actually no factual information connecting him. In fact, for those sleuths that really watched all of that video, you could see him actually leave in the opposite direction of Maddie and Kaylee. So it really made no sense, uh, this belief that he was involved, combined with the fact that law enforcement said he wasn't. So in a way, the fact that this was released, uh, I think, adds to the picture that Hoodie Guy is not involved. I, I would agree uh, wholeheartedly, and I think it's really unfortunate. Uh, we've seen this in other cases, too, but uh, just to, you know, heap so much suspicion on one person just because they were standing nearby. Uh, this shows that he was with them prior to arriving at the food truck, and he was standing around them at the food truck. Um, he was with them 
uh, it appears they left the bar together. So for him to receive so much scrutiny online, I think is wrong as this investigation proceeds. And, you know, other people have suffered from this as well, this type of scrutiny. Uh, we have this bartender, I guess. The father says uh, Adam is the bartender. I know when this first came out on Saturday, I was on one of the Facebook groups and I saw people then scurrying to look at Adam. Who's Adam on their social media accounts? Who are, you know, Maddie and Kaylee following with the name Adam? And so then this guy uh, gets put through the ringer. I mean, I, I just, I find it to be really unsettling because this is like uh, just a few seconds in time of their last night alive. And, and it could mean very little, if anything. Exactly. It's very interesting how when we get a new name that's made public, then the slews just can go wild with that name. They look up all their media platforms. They look up what they've said, what they've done. Any small detail that they find out of sorts, they will take out a context and then blow that up to mean something much more uh, conniving than it actually is. Even these words that are said, when you listen to some of the YouTubers that I've already heard take these few words um, and blow it completely out of proportion, saying that it's very significant. And did you see the looks on their faces and, and the tone of their voices? And it's really terrible um, that this is happening to what I believe are innocent people, certainly innocent at this point. And uh, what that means, uh, this kind of indictment to them in the future. You know, sometimes people will never be forgiven or seen as innocent when they're indicted in social media with this veracity. I want to turn now to the search for the white Hyundai Elantra. Uh, so let's look at a little bit uh, of Moscow police discussing the search for the white Hyundai Elantra. We have looked at um, massive amounts of um, video footage, especially in the critical camera areas. And um, we've looked at the 24 hours prior to and 24 hours after of those. And now we're look, extending that out even further to other cameras and other time, time frames. We have massive amounts of people looking at this, um, multiple um, different groups looking at the different videos in different locations, just because, um, you know, we have investigators all across the nation that are um, reviewing these videos for us and sending us back information on that. Jennifer, we know that the FBI is assisting Moscow PD in searching for the white Elantra that is seen in this surveillance footage, uh, the one that... Uh, Moscow police say they are confident that the occupant or occupants has information uh, that could aid in this investigation. 22,000 white Hyundai Elantras, that's a lot. So how does the FBI assist Moscow PD in basically finding the needle in the haystack? Well, this is what the FBI does so well, in large part because of all the resources we have. So what they're able to do is take this list of 22,000 white Elantras, and they're able to distribute it to their different analytical forces that are throughout the United States, particularly our top 15 office offices have huge analytic squads and this is what they do they do it day in and day out they comb through information they contact individuals that would be associated with these cars and they pare down one by one who could possibly be associated with an Elantra that could be associated with the time frame and Moscow and this incident. And do you think, um, you know, it's likely or possible, probable that this person may not even own this white Hyundai? I think it's very possible that the person that they're seeking doesn't own the Hyundai, but had the use of the Hyundai for whatever reason, whether that's borrowed, whether that's somehow taken without the knowledge of the owner. It's very unclear. Um the words that have been used by police, but clearly, clearly they think this is a main focus that can help them solve this riddle of who committed this crime. And it's interesting to me, there's been some reporting that I've seen that uh, Moscow police went as far as 24 or 30 miles to the east to other towns looking for surveillance footage. Does that lead you to believe they think there was a path of exit to the east of Moscow that they've been able to piece together which direction this car likely headed after leaving? Well, law enforcement has used some particular words that I noticed. 
One was a pattern. They specifically said they've seen a pattern. That really stuck out to me because that means that perhaps they've seen this white Elantra previously and uh, not particularly associated with the dates that are in question, but previously, and they've seen some sort of pattern of direction. So why are they looking 24 miles away? Why these particular stops? I don't think that that's a random check. I truly believe that that was focused based on patterns that they saw involving this vehicle. I'm kind of uh, being, you know, my gut is telling me they have other images of this white Elantra that they haven't released. Uh, do you think that's likely? Because they've said things like, oh, it was in the immediate area or it was, quote, there. Um, and when you mentioned patterns as well, that to me le leads me to believe people are creatures of habit. So a vehicle coming and going, when you watch a neighborhood for a certain amount of time, you're going to see people in their regular routines and possibly the Hyundai is seen before the homicides and during, but not after. So um, do you think there's other footage they have that they just haven't released showing the Hyundai maybe right there at the crime scene? Yes. I mean, one of the pieces of footage is that at least I haven't seen is the footage from the apartment owner. And it's spoken about he talks about it. He says a white or a light colored sedan, I believe. I don't believe he's released that. I believe other than to law enforcement and law enforcement certainly hasn't released it. So that piece of um, footage is quite important. And maybe that was really the genesis of why now through FBI analytical work on the video imaging of that was able to make sure that that image could be pixelated down, if you will, where they can see the precise contours and details of the Elantra to know we're dealing with a 2011 to a 2013. And uh, the video you're talking about is from uh, Linda Lane. That is a street that's right next to King Road. Um, I actually, we went and looked at that apartment building, <laughs> that exact apartment building when we were in Idaho and we saw cameras, um, but they were up in the parking area. Not, we didn't see the one facing the road. Uh, and I talked to Debbie Francetich. Uh, she and her husband own that building. I spoke with her over the weekend and she told me uh, that the FBI did take that footage. The police took the footage. They have regular access to their cameras. And she said, she said it was not, uh, she couldn't tell if it was white. She saw that it was a light colored car. That was what she told me. And she said it was just kind of driving by. It wasn't moving fast. She told me, she said it just kind of drove by. Uh, so she said the FBI was going to work on that video uh, with the tools that they have. Uh, so I'll be interested to see how quickly uh, they come up with this and find this vehicle. Jennifer Koffendoffer, retired FBI agent. Thanks so much for your expertise. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. And that's it for this edition of Law & Crime Sidebar Podcast. It is produced by Sam Goldberg and Logan Harris. Bobby Zoki is our YouTube manager. Alyssa Fisher is our booking producer. And Kiara Bronson handles our social media. You can download and listen to Sidebar on Apple, Spotify, Google, and wherever else you get your podcasts. And of course, you can always watch it on Law & Crime's YouTube channel. I'm Anjanette Levy, and we will see you next time.